Hi everyone, it's me again. I thought I'd um, try and share a few little poses that help us with our tight hips. And tight hips is an expression we use quite a lot. Um, oh, my hips are tight. When we remember how everything is connected, then we really have to ask ourselves where do we feel that tightness? Because it doesn't necessarily mean that's where it's generated from. So we're going to explore the whole of the pelvic area, including the lower back, including the glutes, including the hamstrings, psoas muscles in the front, because all of this area can create the sensation of having tight hips. So let's have a little go. So as always, we start just by gently stretching out, taking a few moments to drop in. So whenever you're ready, just find yourself in a lying down position, whatever feels right for you. Just take a few moments here, hands maybe resting on your belly or your lower ribs so you can begin to feel that breath. Just dropping into our bodies, remember the legs can be bent, you can lift up the tailbone, lengthen through the lower back, broaden the shoulders, tuck the shoulder blades under. And let's just take a few moments here. Focusing on your breath. Focusing on letting go through your body. Do that little scan, the top of your head, all the way down to the soles of your feet. Finding those tight areas. Acknowledging them. We don't ignore them, remember. We don't push through them. We bring those to the mat with us. Draw the chin in so we get that lovely stretch in the back of our neck. A little lifting of the occipital ridge away from the top of the shoulders. As you begin to lengthen and deepen your breath, maybe feel a little bit of the coolness of the air as it comes in. Feel the belly expanding a little bit more, really make a point of almost puffing it up like that little beach ball under there. And then maybe take five deep breaths, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Really feel you're emptying those lungs. Breathe in. Breathe into the ribs, front and back and sides, the belly. And exhale. Really feel that you're expanding your body as much as it can. And as you exhale, feel that you're releasing all the things that you no longer need. Remember, this deep breathing allows us to drop into the parasympathetic nervous system. That's your rest and restore. Hmm. If your legs are straight, then we're going to bend them now. We're going to draw both legs in towards your chest. Just hug them in. Feel free to move the head around a little bit. Hmm. Just while you're here, hold on to the right knee. Hold it in tight as you lengthen up with the left leg. Slowly lowering that heel down. Keep it just parallel to the floor if you can, rather than dropping it down. You can put it on the floor if that's easier for you. And then imagine there's a string in your belly. You're going to pull the string and lift that drawbridge up. Let's just change legs. Inhale, lengthen the right leg up towards the ceiling. Exhale, begin to lowering it down. Both feet flex, all of your toes stand into attention. Inhale, float the right leg back up. And exhale, draw it in. Let's do that two more times on both sides. You don't need to hold the leg. You can just draw that right leg right in towards your body. Exhale as you lower it down. Keep drawing this right leg in. Hold it there just for a second. Inhale, there's that string in the belly, lifting up the drawbridge. Exhale, soften. Maybe now hold them both in. So holding the left leg now is optional. Totally up to you. Slowly release the right leg down. Both feet flex, extending out through both heels. Slowly lift the right leg up and really begin to be aware. Exhale, draw both in. Begin to be aware now. Hold the right leg or not your choice of the work going on in this left hip as you lower the leg down. Remember, it's the front of your thigh, the back, the lower belly. All this area being involved, it's not just your thigh bone dropping down towards the floor. Draw both legs in. One last time on this side. Slowly coming back up. And exhale, soften. Draw those legs in. Maybe roll around a bit, curl up like a ball. Do a few circular motions. 
Remember, the beauty about videos is that you can stop it whenever you want and maybe do a few extra rounds or something, a few different movements that you feel work for you. Individual circles now. Just checking out how that feels. Okay, when we talk about our hips, where do we mean? Is it just where the head of your thigh bone goes into your hip socket? Because it's way more involved than that, really is. Unwind those circles when you've done those three or four in each direction. And then hug them in. Keep the big toe mounds lightly touching, a little bit of space between your heels. Lengthen both legs up to the ceiling. Now we can hold on the back of our thighs, not a problem at all. We're just going to stay here, bend the legs in, bring them back in again. We're going to go up one more time. And we're just going to do one round of dropping those legs down. So we can lower the left leg down. You can hold on to the right thigh. It's totally fine. Really allowing us to be a little bit more aware of where the work is and what's going on. One last time, do the right leg going down. Really feel the stretch through the front of your thigh, the psoas muscles, the glutes. Even my oblique, my waist muscles seem to be involved here as well. Slowly draw both legs in. Oh, fold them in, draw the chin in. And maybe just take a few breaths here. Let the whole weight of your body come into your back. Just for a couple of seconds. Breathe into the floor. Feel the ribs expanding. Hmm. And then slowly hands behind the back of your thighs. Roll yourself up. And let's come up to a seated position. So again, we have cushions, we have blocks, whatever you'd like, just to support yourself a little bit more, maybe. I'm just going to perch myself on a block here and just come into a cross-legged position. And just take a few moments here. Again, you can feel already we're working through the hips just in this position here. Again, just drop in, notice how you feel. And then just notice the way that your legs are crossed. And we're going to uncross them and cross them the other way. So let's do that now. Just take them out, bring them back in the other way. So one way is going to feel very awkward for you. I was a bit sneaky there. I chose my awkward size first because I knew what was going to happen. Sitting up nice and tall, just take a few moments here. And just begin to rotate on your sitting bones. So you feel that you're changing the pressure around the, the base of your sitting bones. So we're not just kind of moving the shoulders and the body, but taking the whole body round and just draw a little circular motion here. And again, notice how you feel the stretching, changing throughout the thighs or the pelvic area. Let's unwind those circles. They don't have to be very big. But feel that you're literally, there are sitting bones around it, so you're exploring how much area of those sitting bones you can actually create a bit of pressure in. And then come back to centre. Just take a few breaths here, lifting up through those knees. Keep the feet together as you extend them out in front of you. Hmm. Just take a few breaths here, hands beside you, fingertips on the floor or palms, whatever's comfortable for you. Sitting up as tall as you can. Begin to feel that zipping up of your um, your tummy here, the engaging of your, your bandhas, mula bandha, iriyada bandha. And doing a little twist is quite good for our hips too. So just bring your left foot on the inside of your right leg, sitting up nice and tall. Bring the knee into the midline and just sit up tall here. Those of you that work with me know I like to lean back, take hold of my tummy, bring everything round with me wrap my arm around and just do a little twist here. So I'm not just twisting through my upper body, I'm bringing this left knee over to my right shoulder to try to get that stretch down the outside of the left thigh. Slowly and gently come back, stretch the leg out, maybe take a few moments just to check in and let's go to the other side. So slowly coming to the other side, right foot now comes in, take your hands around the top of your shin, bring that knee into your sternum almost sitting up as tall as you can. Imagine you're trying to sneak up your thigh. And then again, we're just going to lean back, take all your tummy round, bring a bit. We've all got bits that get in the way. Never fear that. So again, we're bringing the right shoulder, sorry, the left shoulder over to the right knee, the right knee over to the left shoulder. Sit up as tall as you can, flex through the extended foot. Just see my toes there, maybe. And slowly come back to center. 
and then reaching up. Remember to keep the knees slightly soft if you know that that's better for your lower back, reaching down. Slowly bring those hands up, the legs as you inhale, right the way up to the ceiling, and exhale, fold again. Slowly coming up one more time, reaching right up, and let the belly come onto the thighs, take the chin over to the shins, so we're really stretching here. Hmm. Maybe let the hands come down to the floor, maybe let those elbows fall down a little bit. And then rounding up through, so again we're drawing the navel in, coming back up. We're going to bring our feet into our cobbler pose. It's another pose that is great for our hips. We can just rock around a little bit here. We can do our butterfly little movements. Maybe if your arms are long enough, we could just, I can bend my elbows and encourage my knees to widen more. You may feel that you want to just kind of bring your arms against the inside of your thighs and your knees. Sitting up as tall as you can, shoulder blades coming down your back again. Really feel the sternum is trying to be the most furthermost point of your body in the front. Feel the stretch in those thighs. Slowly and gently lifting up. This time we're going to stretch those legs right out. Let me just come back a little bit again. You may feel you don't need the block for this maybe. Get the butt cheeks out the way. Really find those sitting bones. And just let your legs be as wide apart as they feel comfortable. Okay, again, sitting up nice and tall. Feel the length. For me, trying to find space between my collarbone um, and my um, and my pubic bone or my sternum and my pubic bone helps me to try to keep this length in my body. And then just slowly walk your hands forwards. Remember we did this the other day, I think, when we had our legs crossed. Just kind of come forwards. This almost represents your wide-legged forward fold when we're standing. And just kind of sway around a little bit. See if that releases a bit through the back. Maybe you can feel those tight QL muscles. Remember, they're attached to the top of your hip bones at the back. So this is why we really need to think about all the areas connecting here. Let me slowly feel, yeah, I can slowly get my elbows down on the floor now. Just gradually release it, gently come back up. We're going to take your right hand over to your right foot. Left hand on that left thigh, just kind of encouraging a little bit of a, a lifting up of this left side, looking up to the ceiling. You can look down to the toes, you can look to the floor, wherever feels right for you. And just slowly begin to bend that elbow. So if you're holding on to the, um, to the leg, bring the hand on the inside. So you can kind of push a little bit against, and you can bring that elbow down a little bit. Okay, we can't all touch our toes because of the length of our arms. Slowly and gently come back up. Just go to the other side. Grab hold of the other toes. Again, let's take that hand onto the, onto the right thigh and just get that little twisting through the body. So you're almost, as you look down, you've got your elbow over your knee, you've got your shoulder over your thigh here. And again, if you can hold onto the um, toes, that's great. Bend the elbow down to the knee. If your hand's on the inside of your leg, it's totally fine. Just kind of do a little bit of pressure against that leg and drop the knee down. So you're getting that little extra side bend as well. Slowly and gently come back up. And then just bring that right leg in towards your chest. Now what you might need to do is maybe support that. My right knee gives me a little bit of grief sometimes. And I just find it quite nice just to support it briefly. I may decide to come up on my little block here as well. That may feel a bit more comfortable for me. So whatever works for you. Cushions, blocks, picnic blanket, whatever. Take your hands out in front of you. Just take a few moments here. And again, go as far as you can without putting pressure on this knee or the ankle. Slowly and gently come back up. Do a little twist round to that knee that's bent. Just take a few breaths there. Slowly, whenever you're ready, inhale, come round. Flexing through that left foot and go round to the other side. Get a little bit of leverage against this back of your hand, against the leg there. Fabulous. And then again, slowly we're going to grab hold of wherever you can. I can reach my toes, I've got quite long arms. You may want to bring the hand on the inside of your shin again. Maybe it's just below the knee, hopefully, rather than actually on the knee. A little bit of pressure just in this mid-thigh area to lift up the right side of your body. And slowly and gently come down. Again, maybe looking up to the ceiling if you can, maybe looking to the floor. 
slowly dropping down and with this we can stay here for a bit longer if you'd like you'll find the longer you're in a position very often if you can really let go that it will just soften it will just unfold it will just open without you really forcing or just letting gravity in your breath do the work for you slowly and gently come back up let's extend out through the legs bring them back to center take a few moments to check in Widen through the right leg and come in with the left. Now I know I don't need the cushion on this knee. Notice how comfortably it goes down straight away. So we don't always need the same amount of props or support on both sides. Again, going forwards maybe, see how that feels. Slowly coming back up, doing a little twist round to the knee that's bent, the left knee. In this case, maybe it's your right knee, as long as you do both sides. Or the other right. <laughs> Slowly come round to the other side. Perfect. And then again, we're going to slide our hand down this extended leg, whether it's your right leg or your left, grabbing hold of your toes, grabbing hold of the inside of your leg. Maybe you're able to grab hold of your toe with your thumb. We're all different, remember. Again, making sure this heel, I notice that heel's digging a bit to my pubic bone, so make it a bit more comfortable. Looking up to the ceiling, a little bit of pressure against this thigh to lift up through, lifting and slowly rotating. So we're opening through this hip as well. Gently coming down towards that extended leg. Looking down to the floor. Again, go where your neck feels comfortable. Slowly come back up. Extend out through. Just take a few moments here. Maybe do a few little ankle rolls. Widen those legs again. Find your sitting bones. Maybe come off the block if you're on one then and you weren't before. Sitting up as tall as you can. And you may feel that you, it's, it takes a little bit less effort to sit up tall. You may feel you're sitting up taller. And fold forwards. And what you may feel is that you've opened your body. You can feel it. You've lengthened through. And then slowly and gently come back up. Perfect. So one of our favourite, <laughs> not always the favourite one, hip opening pose is our pigeon pose. So again, we haven't got a mat, so it really doesn't matter which direction we go in, how we get into it. We all know we can get into it from downward dog, but we can just get into it casually on the floor as well. So I'm just sitting here with my left knee bent. I'm going to take my props out the way I'm, I'm probably going to use for the moment. And I'm just going to slide this right leg back. And in my own time, I'm just going to bring my right hip down towards the floor. So what I can feel here is this left heel, for me, is coming into my groin. Now remember, if your hips are open, your knee is going to be out here and your shin will be parallel um, to the front of the mat, if we had one. So it's going to be in line. Okay, my hips aren't that happy. My knees certainly are not that happy to go that deep. So just go where you need to go. So slowly coming back, rolling on. So I'm not touching the floor at all. I can tuck my toes over the back leg, lift up through. I can try to lift up a little bit, make sure I feel comfortable. And I personally like to do my sphinx arms with this pose. I like to bring my forearms level, the elbows under my shoulders. Let me just come back a bit so that you can see that. Hopefully there we go. And then what I tend to do is rather than collapsing down, you quite often see people kind of hanging out of it, is just roll the shoulders away and imagine I'm trying to draw my collarbone forwards and upwards. At the same time, I take that left hip and butt it back to the ground. So I'm physically kind of lengthening through this stretch. Again, right toes tucked under. You can see you've got a little bit of a lunge position going on here. We can lift up through as well. We can also do little twists here. Just take the hand round to find that back thigh. We can take the right hand in the centre, come round and find the thigh on that side. And again, always lifting up so we're not just kind of collapsing into it. Draw the pubic bone forwards. So while we're here, let's do another little twist. Just bring that leg round. We can keep it on the inside of that leg if you want, or we can bring it over to the other side. Sitting up nice and tall immediately, we're getting a deeper stretch here. Again, lean back if you want to, bring the tummy round. We've all got bits to get in the way. And just be here, twisting round, bringing that knee over to the centre, 
stretching here. It's not just stretching in the thigh, it's in the buttocks, it's in the glutes. Therefore, it's in the hips too. And from there, if you want to do, we could just come back again into your, um, into your pose and just see how that feels. Have we softened it at all? And then let's come to the other side. So exactly the same thing. We can start by just bringing that leg in. Slowly and gently take the left leg back. Maybe take your time. Remember, this is my right knee. This is my iffy knee. So I need to kind of just check out how far I need to go this morning. Maybe I could bring it out a little bit more. Maybe I need to tuck it closer. Rolling down. So there we go. I can feel the heel coming into the groin a little bit. My right knee is okay. Again, I could tuck the back legs under. And I can bring my arms into the Sphinx pose again and try to, as if you imagine I'm trying to claw myself forwards here, rolling the shoulders down my back. So it's an active. Very often when you see people coming down, they've got their head on the floor, and we might not go, wow, that's amazing. But it's, it's quite passive. Once they're there, they're not really doing anything. They can feel it for sure. I like to energise mine by, again, sending this right hip down towards the ground, lifting up through the collarbone. And then we're just going to drop that right thigh down, bring the left leg around. Maybe it wants to come all the way around. Maybe you're happier on the, uh, on the inside. Again, whichever works for you. Sitting up as tall as you can, shoulders down your back, always shoulders down your back. Try to drop the left hip a little bit down towards the ground, leaning round a little bit, draw the tummy round, wrapping your arm around that knee and again twisting, lengthening up all the time. Keep working at it. Remember we never get any pose in yoga, we're always working at it. And then slowly we can come back and just come back into that pose again. Just see how everything feels. Does it feel a bit lighter maybe? Hmm. And then gradually come back round and again just sit using your block or your cushion, getting the sitting bones nicely grounded, sitting up as tall as you can, softening through the back of the knees. There's nothing wrong with that. What we're doing is releasing the tight hamstrings so we can keep the pelvic girdle in the right position. So rather than collapsing down, so the difference is being a bit like, I'm exaggerating, but being a bit like that, but then if you bend the knees, you find you can sit right up. So we're lengthening up. That's really why we bend our knees. It's not cheating. Why do we get so hung up about, I'm not doing it properly if my knees are bent? Slowly and softly come forwards. Again, reaching for your toes maybe, your ankles, your shins, wherever you are, and kind of wiggle the ribs up towards the knees a little bit, and exhale, come into your forward fold. And just hang down here. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, let the head come down, nose to knees maybe. Just softening and breathe into your back. Notice how the breath will automatically go there. Breathe into your back. Hmm. Perfect, slowly and gently come back up. Excellent. So a lot of us don't have a wall free for us to use in our homes we talked about this in the studio we have furniture radiators windows fireplaces doors we very rarely have a lot of wall space so and one of my favorite poses for you and for me is the legs up the wall pose so remember we can do that on a bolster but i'd like us to use our our furniture here whether it's a chair or a sofa just make sure it's against the wall so well, i'm just going to scoot in here and i'm going to turn around Oh, this is one of my favourite poses. You may have to wake me up. And just take a few moments here. Let the calf muscles really rest on the seat of the chair. So you really feel that you are actually in a chair, but you've just tipped it backwards and laid it on the ground. Just take a few moments here. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about our hips. <laughs> We're going to widen those knees a little bit. Just bring your right ankle onto your left knee. And just kind of, again, encouraging, finding where that openness is. And then we're going to lift up. We're going to grab hold of the knee and the ankle. 
So I'm going to bring that with us as we lay back down. And just, it's like doing a lie down, rocking the baby, just moving that hip. And notice how it feels. Notice how the tightness in the glutes. Don't put too much pressure on that knee. Hmm. And then slowly, gently lengthen it up to the ceiling and bring it back down to the sofa. Take a few moments, maybe just that short little um, experience gives you a bit of warmth in that hip as well. So let's go to the other side. So the left ankle comes onto the right knee. And again, we just encourage trying to find, remember if you go too far, all that happens is the pelvic girdle will actually swivel. Slowly and gently lifting up, or oh, I didn't lift up there, but I know I can reach it. Bring it back with you and just gently rock it. Just trying to take the knee away and bringing that foot a little bit closer to your right shoulder. And you know what, we all need to go somewhere different. So go where you feel it. Slowly release up to the ceiling and lowering it down. Hmm, perfect. So the reason why I asked you to put it against the wall is we're going to bend our knees now. This is quite nice too. It's kind of a little bit more stretch almost. Hit tailbone on the ground to really feel that. And again, keep the feet a little bit wider apart. Hands down beside you. Tuck the shoulder blades under. And we can now use our sofa's edge to do a supported shoulder stand almost, rolling up and down. And we don't need to go too far. I know a lot of people are worried about shoulder stands, worried about the pressure in their neck. Totally fine, I totally get that. So maybe it's just a little bit of a more kind of a deeper um, bridge pose than we would normally go. Maybe you're quite happy coming right the way up. So whatever feels right for you guys, okay? What we could do now is just bring our hands to the back of the thighs, back of your buttocks, and just hang here. So you're really supporting yourself. Bring the weight into your shoulders. Remember, one way to release the tension, tightness from your shoulders, is actually to bring the weight into them. Slowly and gently roll yourself back down, vertebrae by vertebrae, that lovely string of pearls, until finally the tailbone comes down to the ground. Allow your shins to expand over the seat so the calf muscles are nicely relaxed, arms down. And just as you inhale the next time, bring those arms up, however far overhead they want to go, and exhale, bring them back down. Inhale again. If they don't want to go over to touch the floor today, it's totally fine. Just whatever feels right for you. And then maybe interlace your fingers and just take your hands behind the back of your head at the thumbs almost do a little massage here and let's bring the soles of your feet together the outer edge of your feet resting against the edge of the seat cushion and relax the shoulders down some people's elbows will automatically touch the floor if your shoulders feel a bit tight they may not and just take a few moments here Just check in, notice how you feel. Hmm. And then slowly release your hands. Take your hands to the knees, gently lift those knees up. And again, just stretch those legs out. So this may be, you've decided right now, it's your time to just settle down into Shavasana. And that's totally fine if it is. Another option, again, we're using the furniture you've got at home, is to actually maybe come onto a block. Again, I still quite like sitting on the block. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable for me. Take the block right in towards the, um, the sofa, coming into your cross-legged position or maybe your cobbler pose. And again, noticing how by coming back against the chair, it's the same as doing it against the wall, how it creates this lovely length in our spine. So you may decide that that's a nice way. It's quite, I like finishing sometimes seated. It changes it somehow, makes it more energized. Um, it makes me more aware of what's going on in my body. So try that by all means. If that doesn't work for you, then please feel free to go back to the 
Lie down on the floor with the legs over the sofa. Find your blanket. And just take your time here to come into your Shavasana, your corpse pose. So whatever position you decide to do, it may be curled up in a ball with a blanket over you. It may be lying on the top of the sofa by now. It's totally fine. Just go where you need to go. But just draw yourself inwards. Come into that place of rest. Give your body permission to come into this place of rest. Feel your gentle organic breath. Notice the fluctuation of your thoughts. These are strange times we're in. It is so important for us to find the time to come into a place of rest. To be at one with ourselves, to go within, whatever expression, whatever words work for you. So see if you can feel yourself doing that. Sinking deeper and deeper as if you're going down the rungs of a ladder. Feeling your skin softening, your fascia, your muscles, your skeletal body. All of your connective tissues just softening. Jaw becoming slack, eyelids resting on your eyes, every single facial muscle. Your shoulders, your arms, your fingers, your thumbs. Vertebrae by vertebrae, rib by rib, you feel the whole of your body just letting go. Maybe your tummy rumbles as you let go of any tension you're holding. Relaxing through the buttocks, the hips, the thighs, knees, shins, ankles, toes. Give yourself permission to come into this place of rest. Whatever you've got planned for the rest of your day, it will happen. But this is your time. Remember, this is an essential journey. Follow the flow of your breath as it becomes softer and softer. And again, I'm just going to leave you here. Feel free to stay here as long as you need to. Come into a place of stillness. And as always, I thank you from my heart to yours for bringing me into your home again. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Bye.